Hey folks, Dan Freer here, the rate update. Today is August 3rd, 2021. When you come back, we're gonna talk housing, mortgage rates, and the economy. Don't go away, we'll be right back. So people watch the channel to figure out, Dan, what's going on with housing? Is it a good time to buy or not? What are mortgage rates gonna do? What's the economy doing? I just got on a uh, off a Zoom meeting with a bunch of uh, wealth managers and their clients. There was a, a slew of people on there, and it's, the questions come up the same. And there, there was attorneys on there and everything. Uh, and I, I, I had a platform on there, and I spoke my piece on it. And the cool thing is, I just got done with that, and I went to CNBC, and one of the guys that sits on the the, the Federal Reserve um, just came out with a bunch of comments, and it it's kind of crazy how it mirrored exactly what I just went over with a whole bunch of financial planners, wealth advisors, wealth clients, and attorneys. So watch this video and then we're gonna come back and I'll give you my take on it. Is, is the, the bond purchases, the $120 billion of asset purchases helping the labor market specifically? Well, the labor market really, the bill's problems are more on the supply side, not the demand side. There's plenty of demand for labor. I mean, the vacancy to unemployment ratio is almost one in terms of number of people looking for jobs. Uh, we don't have any problems with uh, workers saying they can't find jobs. There's plenty of jobs. So it's not a demand side problem. And that's what monetary policy normally does. So hopefully once we get through September, some of the unemployment benefits go, if schools all reopen and don't get affected by the Delta variant, then the labor market should really take off starting in about August and September. Hopefully that'll continue on through the rest of the year. So it sounds like, Governor Waller, you're, you're pretty optimistic on the economy that we're going to continue to see growth. The 10-year yield right now is down to 117. Is the bond market sniffing out something that, that you're not seeing? Yeah, it could be. There's a lot of stories. I don't really know. There's a lot of things that be going on with the bond market. Uh, my suspicion is that the Delta variant is creating a bunch of uncertainty. I don't think it's going to have a big impact on the U.S. directly, but it could through our foreign trading partners. But I think within the U.S., I don't really see it having a big impact. If you remember back in December, we were looking at, you know, the absolute peak of the COVID uh, variant um, in terms of deaths, hospitalizations, everything. People were predicting a recession in the first quarter of this year, and instead the economy grew at 6.4%. So even in the worst of all worlds, the economy still went on and did extremely well. So I'm looking for the same thing to happen now, and then that the Delta variant's not going to sideline or you know sidetrack the U.S. economy in any way. Where do you stand on the whole issue of transitory inflation? Yeah, I mean, I'm in my base forecast is that inflation will cool off in the latter part of the year and that some of these increases that have occurred because of reopening will cool off and inflation will come back down. That's my base case. My concern is just anecdotal evidence I'm hearing from business contacts who are saying they're able to pass prices through. They fully intend to. They've got pricing power for the first time in a decade. Those are the sorts of issues that make you concerned that this may not be transitory. So it's really an upside risk. I don't foresee it as my base case, but I do worry about the upside risk that this becomes more than just transitory. Where, where would you say you are relative to the rest of the Fed on, on that point? Is, is the committee moving toward that idea as these, these high inflation prints stick with us and we do see more and more companies with pricing power? I would say that people haven't really changed their outlook. It's what I just said. They look at it more as an upside risk uh, to inflation than, than what they originally forecast a few months ago. Uh, we all think it's probably going to pull off once you get to like October, November. Uh, but there is the upside risk that wage pressures from the labor market, the bottleneck problems we're seeing don't unravel as fast as we think, and that you may have this upside risk to inflation. Uh, but inflation expectations are well anchored. They don't seem to be moving, certainly in market expectations. So the markets certainly believe the same story that we're telling. Do, do you have concerns about the Fed being behind the curve on inflation if we were to see it more persistent, say, into 2022? Well, given my outlook, which is very optimistic for the economy, 
Uh, as I said, if the jobs reports come in, as I think they're going to in the next two reports, then in my view with tapering, we should go early and go fast uh, in order to make sure we're in position to raise rates in 2022 if we have to. I'm not saying we would, but if we wanted to, we need to have some policy space by the end of the year. Um, that may be on you know, the more optimistic side of the committee, but that tends to be the outlook uh, that I have. Tapering early and fast. Can, can you elaborate on that, what, what that would look like? Well, like I said, we could, I would easily envision that if the numbers come in with 800,000 to a million jobs in the next two reports, you could taper in October. You don't have to wait till January. Uh, and fast, meaning a faster pace than we had in the last uh, tapering episode. In that situation, the economy was, got to keep in mind, when we started tapering in 2013, unemployment was 7.5%, growth was 1.5%, GDP growth, and, and inflation was 1.5%. So we're in just a completely opposite situation. We've got growth over 6%, unemployment under 6 and inflation over 3%. So there's no reason you'd want to go slow on the tapering uh, in it to prolong this. You want to get it done and get it over. Okay, so I hope you learned some stuff from that. When the Federal Reserve starts seeing employment numbers, that was their number one concern. I keep telling you guys, when they start seeing employment numbers a million plus a few months in a row, expect them to act fast and furious. And what they're going to do is they're going to probably taper back on their bond purchases of mortgage-backed securities and that is going to push up rates, guys. It is what it is. Is it going to happen today? Nope. Rates are, I think the rates even got a little bit better today. We're going to talk about that. Um, the next thing is, is there a housing bubble? Don't think so. Um, and the reason being is people have equity. Okay. So a lot of times is the government, the banks, the Federal Reserve, everybody stepped in to try to help the consumer, especially homeowners, saying you don't have to make a payment for up to 18 months. Okay. From the, and that point, you hopefully you're on your feet. Even the federal chairman said, there's a lot of, or the Federal Reserve person, there's a lot of jobs out there. It's just getting hard to fill them. And nobody can put the finger on why. I mean, I kind of know why, but nobody wants to really say that and put theirself on the front and then be, you know, ridiculed by all the media. But again, I'm going to beat this dead horse. If you're in forbearance and you don't have to make a mortgage payment for a year, you don't have to make a student loan payment for a year, and you're getting excess benefits from the government, 70% of the last stimulus check that went out, studies show it, went into savings or investments. So that's what's going on there. But the biggest take I want you guys to see on this is the Federal Reserve, they know what they're doing. They're watching this. They don't want to get behind the bubble. So they said as soon as employment starts to tick up like they're hoping, they're going to act fast and furious. So be prepared. Okay. So the next thing is we want to see is what, what happened to rates today? Well, we did have a little debacle. Not a debacle, but it, it it turned, and I'm going to show you. We were positive at the beginning of the day. Now we're negative. Okay, people follow me because of this. What is this? Well, it's the mortgage-backed securities market that we follow. Well, Dan, who cares? Well, we all care who have a mortgage, and we're in the business, and realtors, and if you're looking to buy a house or refinance. Why? This is the biggest piece of the puzzle when it comes to mortgages. That's your mortgage rate. It's not the 10-year treasury. And on this chart, it's not the S&P 500, and it's not the Federal Reserve. They don't determine, the Federal Reserve is kind of manipulating some things, but they don't determine your mortgage rate. Rates are compounded or fig calculated through the MBS market. And this is a bond that trades on Wall Street. We follow this number right here. This is what's happening to the price of the bond. As the price goes down, not good news, folks. Prices go down, what happens? There's an inverse relationship or a flip-flop of what happened to the uh, rate or your mortgage rate. Prices go down, mortgage rates go up. Mor prices go up, mortgage rates come down. Can't make it any simpler than that. It's flip-flop, think of it that way. So look at the run that we're in right now with mortgage-backed securities. This is crazy. And I feel that we're overbought, meaning I think rates are too low right now. Okay, I said it. Yep, and I'm in the mortgage business. We're going to it's it, it's it's out of equilibrium. Okay, and why the bond market does the bond market know something that we don't? You know, it, it, it's basically pricing in right now, saying that you know there there might be a recession ahead. But then you heard from the uh, Federal Reserve person that they don't that's that's out of the mix. They don't see that happening. Could it? 
anything could happen. So let's get on to what, what the trends are and what my expectations are. I all, and you can go back to a ton of my videos. I said we should be trading at the 101.8 handle, and that's right here. Okay. All right. So that's right here. Okay. Let me let me put all this into context. All these lines through here, they they mean something. These that go straight across, they're Fibonacci levels. Okay. They're 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 there. They're not really there. They're artificially there to give us signals on when we hit a top. Also, when we hit a bottom. Okay, so the, let's look at this time frame right in here. So we keep hitting a top. We hit this top, we blew through it. We hit this top, blew through it. We hit this top. Now we stayed over it for two days. That's great signaling, but we've come off of that today. So basically, I'm looking at we, sh you know, the new trend lines should be between right here and right here. Okay. So that's where we should most likely be trading. If you see the middle of that, it's about you know, 106 to 108, 108, 106, right over in here. Okay. So that would put rates at right about, right above 3%. All right. So that's where we should be trading. Okay. So that's what's historically going. Now I'm not, I'm not going to fight the trend. The trend continues to go up. I had a couple of clients say uh, today, Dan, you know, what are we doing? You keep telling me rates are, are dropping. They are, guys. I'm not locking anybody in. I am monitoring this on a minute-by-minute -minute basis. If you go back to your emails, I guaranteed you I would get you that rate or better, and we keep getting better and better and better. That's one of the biggest benefits that you have by using us. Okay? Now, that's the trend. What's the economic calendar that might kind of screw up this whole thing? Well, again, the Federal Reserve person said they're monitoring um, employment payroll numbers, okay? They want to see a million plus a couple months in a row. Well, the consensus right now is for 700,000 uh, in this report that's coming out tomorrow morning. What's it actually going to be? I don't know. ADP is notoriously wrong. But then we we start going to Thursdays, uh, continued jobless, where is it? Continued jobless claims here and or initial jobless claims here and continued jobless claims here. And then Friday, the unemployment numbers. So the next three days are going to be really crucial. And we're going to monitor this on a tick by tick by tick basis because I, I'm waiting for this to take a turn. Because what will happen is usually you'll turn and go down and then turn and go down. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. Even if it stagnates, I'm going to sit there and wait until it actually turns before I start locking everybody. So now what happened today in in throughout the intraday? Well, there's a lot of red signals here that I don't like. Do they know something that we don't? Maybe. Because what will happen is tomorrow the ADP uh, payroll number will come out before the markets open, before the banks even open. So we won't have time to readjust our um, any of our interest rates if the payroll number goes astronomical and then the markets start acting before we have time to, to come out with our, our rate sheets. So I think a lot of people are saying, you know what, I'm going to put be in a cautionary position and maybe sell out of my position and see what tomorrow brings. Because remember, guys, this is a bond that trades on Wall Street. People are buying and selling this and making money. Okay, so now next thing is, where are rates today? Well, let's go to our Black Knight uh, survey. Black Knight surveys mortgage lenders all over the country, and they come back with what their rates are on 30-year terms, 30-year conforming, jumbo, FHA, and VA. They're right here. Again, these are not my numbers. And these are basically a generic number. So you might get a rate better than this. You might get a rate worse than this. There's a lot of pieces of the puzzle that are components of this. Like if your credit score is way low, your rate's going to be higher than that. If your credit score is way high, your rate might be better than that. Okay, so there's all there's a whole bunch of variants to this. I just want you to be aware of what the trend is. Okay, so the trend is right here: one day, seven day, and four week delta. Delta means change. All right. So basically, to make any differences in rates, the more the market has to move by at least point or ten basis points. Okay, a basis point right here, let's say three basis points, equates out to 0 0.03. So. Rate sheets for mortgage lenders aren't going to really change until you have a 0.1 adjustment, not 0.03. I hope that makes sense. So if you go over here, well, let's just break this down. One day delta, 
basically no changes, okay? It's, it's fractional, no difference. Seven day, same thing. When you hit a one month, that's when you start to see double digit changes. We're gonna need at least a 10 basis point move to have any really relevancy in, in the mortgage rate. So over the four week delta, the four week change, you're seeing about an eighth of better in rate than where we were a month ago. Look at this trend. Back in March, rates were peaking on the VA, rates were peaking over three. Now they're down to about 2.6. Look at the rates on conventional loans. They were three, four back in March. Now we've just dropped under three. Now put a lot of this in context. Some of these lenders are, you know, might be, it might be charging you some points to get that rate. Again, this is a generic rate, a middle of the road. Your rate is going to be higher, could be a little bit higher, could be a little bit lower than this. There are also fees involved in a lot of this. So this, you know, just take this for an educational purposes to get a trend on where rates are going. So I hope you find value in this. That's all I got for the day. Sorry, it was a little lengthy, but I hope you learned something. All I ask you to do, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe down below, hit the bell every time I post a video, you get an alert. So if you're out there, you're looking to build a house, buy a house, refinance, or you're in forbearance, please get a hold of us, okay? What I ask people to do is if you're in the process right now, shoot me a copy of your loan estimate. If you, have a, if you have a loan estimate out there. Okay, I ask people to do this, but the, the tough thing is when you send me three a day, guys, the market's fluctuating every day, all day long, as you can see by the chart that we just looked at in, in the intraday. It's hard to do that. So sometimes you just have to pick with your gut and go with it. Uh, so, you know, if I'm the same rate as somebody else, but my costs are 300 bucks, I'd hope you go with me because you know all the details that we follow. You know how to get a hold of us. I have a whole team of people behind us. So that's what I'm asking you to do. If you're in a forbearance, we're going to discuss that a little bit more in detail later in the later in the week because a lot of people are coming out of forbearance right now. If you're in a forbearance, you need an exit strategy. The people that I spoke with, even the attorneys on the line, they're like, oh, you know, you can't do anything if once you get out of forbearance for at least a year or so. Isn't that right? And I'm like, no, that's not right. So even the attorneys don't know right now. It is a confusing time. So that's why I have you, have you reach out to us. How do you get a hold of us? Well, I try to make it as simple as I can. We just launched a brand new website. Go to therateupdate.com. And there's multiple ways to get a hold of us. You know, if you want to apply for a loan, just get the ball rolling. You don't have any questions. You're just like, I, I want to refinance and I want to use you guys. Click the apply now button. Get rolling. If you're like, hey, I'd like to talk to somebody. Two ways to do it. Call us if it's during work hours, 844-775-LOAN. Or if it's after business hours, click this tab right here, schedule a meeting. You click it, it'll open up all the times, uh, days and times available to us. Then you can also pick if you want to do it by phone call or by Zoom. And that's the easiest way to do it. And that's how I mostly, you know, most people are doing it right now. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. We just hit 15,000 subscribers this morning. So thanks to you guys to make that happen. God bless, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.